people that go by wonder about the place. How old is it? What kind of families lived in it? How much longer the place is going to stand? This place, I think, it's just inspired a lot of people and photographers. This abandoned house is probably one of the most, if not the most, iconic abandoned house in Oregon. When I first saw photos of it, I decided I had to come here for myself. And this was the first abandoned house that I ever photographed. And so it sort of started me on this oh, obsession of photographing these Get places. All these places before yeah. they're gone? Yeah, mm -hmm. because they don't last forever. The things that I love the best, I find on the less traveled roads. There's this thrill of anticipation of what am I gonna find because it's almost like a treasure hunt. One of my favorite things to do is to pack up my camera and hit the road. Sometimes I don't even know where I'm going. I have seen so much more of the state simply because I wanna drive for five hours <laughs> to go photograph one house. Friends and family probably think, a little bit nuts, a little bit um, obsessive, but to me it's worth it because it's not just the house, it's also the journey to get there and it's what I might see along the way, it's what I might experience along the way. So this is one of my absolute favorite places to come, it's just so iconic. A lot of the photographers I know just refer to this as the Orange Crush gas station. It's one of those places that really just gets my imagination going. Imagine muscle cars pulling in here. Imagine farm trucks pulling up to get gas. 66 cents per gallon on gas. I love finding little details the patina and the peeling paint. I might see the bigger picture first and document the building, but it's all these little things that really tells this visual story of the history here, what was here. I'm not just this crazy girl out there taking photos of abandoned places. There's actually a whole giant group of us that all over Oregon, in fact, all over the world, that just really, really enjoy these places. Abandoned Oregon is a page that was created by a friend of mine that I helped to admin. We really had no idea how big it would get, but it is up to almost 24,000 members now. Here's an old logging tunnel that's been abandoned. Here is an abandoned train car, all boarded up. Here's an old schoolhouse. A lot of the time you'll pull up and there's huge no trespassing signs. Well, I think this is what you were looking for, and I appreciate you calling and asking permission to yeah, come in here. It's a real treat when you're able to track down a property owner and actually ask permission, and then you, you, know, you get that permission from them, and you get that okay, and you're like, yes. Watch your step. Falls down just a little bit more every year. like Judy was here and did a self-portrait. <laughs> you know, that's been there probably 60 years. We had all these one-room schools and they would be K through eight and they would ride horses or whatever to get there. You had to be, a, you know, basically a, an hour or two horseback ride and that's why they're dispersed everywhere. This is a little piece of our history. This is a piece of Oregon's history and it needs to be documented. It really makes you think about times past that are really important to our history. Stories of the Oregonians who came before us, our ancestors, our Oregon history. 
me see if I can get this undone. I'm gonna guess it's been a couple of years since uh, that's been undone there. There we go. Quite honestly, I've never peeked in here before. Oh, we got Firestone tires. Oh, there's the old wow. washing machine. Look at all those old papers. Well, that one says right. July 26th, 1913. 1913. Wow. Sometimes there's something really beautiful about filth. The cracked linoleum. Sometimes you find old newspapers in the walls that they use to actually insulate. Sometimes you find old square nails. Uh, you find these little pieces of history. I don't just look at it as rotting wood and peeling paint and decaying wallpaper. I look at it as a life, a life that was once lived. A long time ago, when I first really got into photography and got into photographing these places, I did share locations on Instagram and Facebook. But as time has gone on, I've come to understand that um, it is a really important thing for us to recognize that these are places that need to be respected and protected. It's become harder and harder with social media to keep lesser known places just that lesser known. There are a lot of them that have been vandalized. People go in, they leave their trash, they may leave their graffiti mark. The glass is smashed out, there's beer bottles, there's things you probably don't want to know about. This is a pretty cool place with some really interesting backstory. This was a hotel that uh, serviced the old mining towns in this area. I can only imagine some of the things that took place here. Probably things I don't want to know. But that's still compelling in its own right. And unfortunately, the place is trashed. This is one that people haven't respected. They took a picture of me on the front porch, November 1929. This is the uh, stairwell window here. The front porch was right here. The people that remember these places and the people that remember what took place there, those people are fading away slowly. No electricity in those yeah. days, no. The cook stove was here in a hot water tank. And then there was a bathtub that sat here. We always had a lot of chickens for the eggs and the meat, and cows for milk, butter. And I would sit on the little footstool and I would churn the butter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so this was the big dining room. Meeting someone who physically lived there or physically went to school there is incredibly amazing to me because I actually get to walk in their shoes for a minute. I get to see what they saw. I get to experience what they experienced. <sighs> it's really cool to have you back here, you know? That's, that's really well, I'm great. Glad I could come, yes. Yeah. Oh. What a view. Yeah, isn't it though? Yeah. Whatever happens to it, this could be my last chance mm -hmm. to be here. This could be my last chance to document this piece of history. This is OPB, I'm Kate Davidson. The substation fire burning through the heart of Oregon's wheat country is now the nation's top priority fire. Only a few weeks after getting back from my road trip, uh, the Dallas substation fire broke out and the Nelson house is gone, just like that. I can't even describe to you how I felt. It was devastation. There's nothing left. 
I captured this piece of history that is now just history. It's gone, except in the record of my camera and other photographers that have come through and looked at it as more than just a decaying house. I'm sort of building this collection of all these little pieces of the past that will one day just fade away. But for now, I do what I can to sort of save them the only way that I can. <laughs>